Hello everyone and welcome back to another Apostles of Mchinjikwa podcast. Firstly, I would like to say that thank you for watching our videos, um, for your comments and for your likes. We appreciate that you are walking on this journey with us and we hope that the podcasts we're doing are providing some sort of help to you in any way that may be. So for this week, the topic of which I will be discussing will be about education. So in relation to Apostles of Muchinjigwa, what does it mean for us to be educated? Such as, do we go to school? Do we advocate for education? Or do we just keep kids away from any sort of interaction with the rest of the outside community. Why we're discussing this topic is because for some of you that know, some of you that may not know, you hear many instances of apostles not going to not going to school or that they do not believe in education. So this is why one of the main purposes in creating this podcast was to help to debunk such myths, to help give people the correct and proper education regarding apostles, regarding apostles. So firstly, when we mean education, what do I mean? When I speak about education, we're talking about um, an enlightenment, such as you experience something and then it enlightens you. So you have sort of a revelation. So you grow from experiencing something. So initially, when you come to Masowe, the first thing that you are you are, you are told when you say, I want to become an apostle, or I want to become an apostle and to help to follow this religion, to help in this movement, the first thing that you are, that you are told is that you are educated about what it means to be an impostor in the first place. You are told the rules and the regulations, such as what do we eat and what do we not eat. You are told the prayer times and like our dress code as well. So this is information that you're given. So in the very first instant, when you want to become an impostor, you are educated. So even if you look at the times of Yeshua or Jesus, when he spoke, they used to call him Rabbi, Rabbi, which was meaning teacher. This shows you the stance that he had on education, that he was there to educate and to teach people about God and to teach people about the heavenly, the divine matters of life. So this is also why we take such a strong stance on education and we believe that you have to learn and to understand your religion because once the deeper your understanding becomes, then the greater your faith can be. And for such instances, you see in Apostles of Muchinjigwa, hopefully when you guys come to visit us and you come to experience the church, you will see that we have cases such as we have Sunday school and Sunday school is mainly an opportunity for the younger generation and for the kids to learn from a very fundamental point of view of what it means to be an apostle of Machinjigwa. So they'll just get told as in who is God to us. When we say God or Musikavanu, which is the creator, and we teach them about God from our perspective from an African spirituality perspective, from Apostles of Muchinjuko perspective. And this is done because, especially as we are all scattered across in different countries, there's many different perspectives of what religion is and who God is. But in our religion, we have to be able to educate our younger so that they are able to understand their own faith and are able to grow more into it. So we believe that to help education is very important, such as it's also important in improving your quality of life. As in that when we speak on educating people, we do not necessarily just speak about educating people spiritually, because 
If you look at the life of a person, you have to help people find fulfillment in their life. You have to help them find the purpose of their life. And to do this, you help to educate them. So in order to find that balance, there's many areas that we have to be able to tackle, such as we have to look at the mental health of a person. We have to look at the financial health of a person, the physical health of a person. These are the type of areas that we help in order to educate people on. And we do this because we understand the effects that these can have on your relationship with God. Such as if, if someone is unable to provide for themselves financially, it will cause them a problem in their spiritual life because you'll be thinking that you can't pay your bills. You'll be thinking, how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to support my family? You know, and these kinds of instances will cause you to go back in your spiritual growth. And some people might not realize that, you know, such things such as your mental health can affect your spirituality. Such as, for example, when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, he went and he prayed with the apostles. And while he was in the garden, he was praying and he was saying, Please, God, if able, would you let this cup pass from me? And he was saying, if you can just take it away. And it said that his, his spirit was troubled. This showed that your state of mind, that at this time Jesus was anxious, Anxious. Anxiety means worrying about your future. So he was anxious of what was to come to him. And this troubled his spirit. So in the same situation with us as well. If we have things that trouble our, 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 our mentality. It will also trouble our spirituality. So this is why we have to be educated on how to take care of ourselves. Mentally and financially. Because it will also impact us on our spiritual growth and it will also impact us on our relationship with God. So, this is the stance of Masoi when it comes to education that you have to be able to give people information which is going to help them with their journey with God because. As, as you are in Apostles of Omichinjikwa, you are an individual. You are a person, you have tailored needs. So that these certain areas of your life needs to be addressed. And you have to be given the tools and the resources in able to tackle such situations. So if we are able to educate ourselves in these areas, then we are able to... To increase the potential that we have in order to do God's work. So if you take away your, your, anxi your anxiety. If you take away your financial burdens. Then you are able to do more of God's work. So if you want to become a vessel of God. Your number one priority should be taking care of that vessel. You need to take care of the temple that God gave you to make sure that when you use it, it will be used to its fullest potential. And one of the greatest statements that I've heard and I have been taught, it says that in the home of every successful person is a library. I'll repeat it one more time. It says that in the home of every successful person is a library. So for people who are successful in whatever area this might be, this might be pastors in spirituality, this might be businessmen and, and CEOs, in all of the cases that they have, they have a library, which means they have a form of education of which they're doing it to better and to increase ourselves. So this is why as Apostles of Muchinchko we are advocates for education because we believe that yes you should pray to God but to also to take care of your relationship your quality of life should also be taken care of. 
And lastly, I will leave with a statement that I'm sure my brothers and sisters in South Africa would know by Nelson Mandela when he said, Education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And if there's any other further topic that you wish for us to discuss, please just comment and let us know. And with that, I say thank you and glory be to God.